Like, just to let you know that all of the work we do up here, we'll take a picture of it and we're going to put it onto a PowerPoint presentation for you to see if you don't get it. Uh, this will all be on one central document. We'll have a listing link there. And this is going to be sort of our learning blog. Thank you, Mr. Goodman, for the idea. And uh, if all, all of them will be dated and you just have a link to it. And if you need help, you can just see the picture of all our solutions that we've done up here. Hello, and today we're going to talk about finding angles in a right angle triangle. Previously we spoke about three equations that we knew about, the sine, cos, tan equation, known as Sokotoa. But what if you were asked to do the opposite? We've normally been discussing about how to find sides in the triangle, and specifically we're going to mention this in a right angle triangle, because you cannot find sides using that method in a, in a triangle that hasn't got 90 degrees within it. But what if you were asked to find the angle? You think we're going to work backwards, but there isn't actually a function. You can't use sine as a function to work backwards. So what do you do? Again, you use a calculator. Again, you find the ratios of the sides. But we use something called the function minus 1, or the function inverse. I'll just explain to you what this is, using this example. You know that this equate that to get this triangle you do sine theta theta is a Greek alphabet and it's normally used to give the angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse 5 8 to find the angle you can't just do 5 over 8 divided by sine it just doesn't work it's a function it's not a sine it's a number and we'll explain about that way further on how this, how this works but for the meantime, what you would do, you would obviously get theta on one side and you would make it equal to something. What you do is that you do a function called sine inverse, inverse being minus 1 in this case. You have, you put it in the bracket, the ratio of the sides, opposite of the hypotenuse. If I show you here, and I'm going to give it to the camera, sine minus 1. 5, 8, and it gives you the angle of 38.6822 degrees. The camera round will show it to you. It shows you the answer of 38.6822. Right, so uh, the function is here, see just above here. So we do sine, this is normal sine, and this is inverse. And then you just uh, get 5 and 8. Sorry. Go down 8. And then you get the answer. Thank you very much. So what he's showing you is that you can get the answer of, and I just need to bring it back up, 38.7 degrees. Which is the angle here. So now that we've figured out the answer, we're going to write 38.7 degrees. Which is equal to that. What you saw in that calculator, just a quick point, is that you actually do the shift. If you shift sine button, if you don't do shift, then, you, then you're just going to get a sine function, and that's not really, really what you want. In this question, you don't use sine. Well, why not? Well, let's, let's write Sokotoa. Because that's what we mentioned in the previous video. I don't have an opposite. I don't. And likewise, I don't have an opposite here. So you use the cosine adjacent hypotenuse rule to figure out if you, if you are given the angle, in terms of respect to the angle, cos theta is equal to 7 over 12. Like I've shown you here, you can't do 7 over 12 divided by cos. It doesn't work. Because it's a function, it's not a value like pi. To get theta, you do similar. You do, and I'm just going to doing it myself, and I'm going to repeat what I say, cos minus shift cos minus 1, use the fraction button, 7 over 12, it turns out you can do 7 divided by 12, it just makes it easy. That gives you the answer of 54.3147, here the camera will show you how it's done. Yeah, so just like the last one, here's cos and here's cos inverse, so all you have to do is press shift, cos, and there it is, and it's 7 over 12. So we press the fraction button, 7, go down, 
and then we do one and two and close the bracket and we get the answer of 54.3 now, what the cameraman has just mentioned to you is that the answer is 54.3. Apologies. Now, what you'll see in an exam question is that they normally write, give your answer to one decimal place. Of course, when you have an answer this short, it seems tempting to write the whole answer in because you just found it out. But when they say give it to one decimal place, you do have to answer it like this. I'm just going to move a bit. 54.3 degrees. Angles are normally given to one decimal point. And so it would be best to do it. It's sometimes better to write in case they don't say that one decimal place. Because you've rounded this answer. If you wrote this instead of this, that's incorrect. Because it's not actually the exact value. You're saying 54.3000. It's not. It's 54.3147. Third question. I'm just going to rewrite the second term error again for this purpose. Now, I have an opposite that I have an adjacent, but I don't have a hypotenuse. Instantly, two of the two of the functions cancel out. What did you get left behind with? Well, you may have, not, may have just noticed it was the tan function. In respect of theta, which is the angle we're going to find out, tan theta is equal to opposite, which I'm going to, which is 9, and adjacent, which is 4. Now, you can't divide by tan, so what do you do? Surprisingly enough, there is also a tan, line, a tan inverse function. Theta is equal to tan minus 1, brackets 9 over 4. So, do this in the calculator, I'm just going to do it here and then recite what I say. What I do, sorry. No, tan minus 1, so let me shift tan button on the far right, on the far right 9 over 4. That gave me the angle of 66.0375 degrees. The cameraman will also again show you how it's done. Yeah. Just like the other just like the other two is tan here and tan inverse just above. So tan inverse, fraction button. 9 over 4, so 9 down 4, and close the bracket, 66, and 66.0375, so to one decimal place it should be 66.0. Yeah. So, I'm going to show you, 66.03, that angle here is 66.03. One thing that does happen, and it's a very small point, is that sometimes they give you a triangle and the angle doesn't look to be as big as what it says. That doesn't matter. They will always say to you that it's not to scale. So you shouldn't worry about it and you should just do the working out. One drop, one main point, and we'll cut this later. If the triangle is not right angled, then you cannot do sine, cosine, or tan. To know whether a triangle is right angled or not, you could do Pythagoras, maybe. The best way just to do it is to see if there is a square. Square always has 90 degrees. And so you'll know that the triangle is a 90 degree and a square. Right angle triangle. Right angle. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button, subscribe, and could you please comment down below to let us know which topics you would like us to cover next? It really helps. Thanks. Thank you.